time this presentation, I will share you manage your glasses efficiently, efficiently uh, pictures. Okay, so the authors of this work are uh, Ligia Fernandez Pinoza Ceballos and Sandy Soto. Objectives for these presentations, uh, we have uh, to understand the fundamental processes that contribute to efficient class management and that influence the teaching learning plus process. Also, we intend to present several guidelines that can help teachers to manage their classes effectively, especially for those working with high school students. Well, so one of the factors that most contribute uh, to the optimal learning uh, of students is definitely class, class management. Uh, if a student's behavior is not properly managed in class, it is very likely that a class will become troublesome. Uh, in this type of classroom environment, it is very difficult for the teacher uh, to meet the objectives of the day, and obviously the students will learn much less. Uh, for that reason, it is necessary to look for some strategies that promote uh, both a peaceful uh, class environment and a healthy coexistence that allow for optimal learning. And we cannot forget talking about rules. So it is necessary to establish these rules because uh, they help students to self-regulate and stop engaging in disruptive behavior. So, when we are setting rules, we have to consider uh, different points, uh, such as the fact that this rule should, should be developed by both the students and the teacher, not only but by the teacher himself. Um, they should be few also. It is recommended that, rules, uh, that the rules you set uh, should be between five to eight rules. They have to be clear, specific, positive, consistent, explained and modeled by the teacher and also established from the very first day of class. Uh, when we are developing these rules, it is necessary to consider different things uh, it is necessary to keep different things in mind. For example, we have to make a list of the rules that we consider are the most important and fundamental for proper management of the class. Also, we have to make a list of the behaviors that show that these rules uh, are met and how we expect these rules to be met. Um, similarly, we have to make a list of behaviors that show that these rules are not met. Uh, how a student can um, not to meet a certain rule. Uh, finally, we have to establish clear and specific uh, and direct related consequences for, for bad behavior. If a student does not comply with a rule, does not meet a rule, meet a rule uh, there have to be there has to be consequences in order for them to take this rule seriously. Um, so, if we are facing indiscipline in our classrooms, how can we manage this indiscipline? There are some suggestions, some recommendations from experts, uh, from experts such as uh, they say that we should get to know our students. Um, to identify their needs and what are the possible causes of their indiscipline. So maybe these students who are misbehaving in class, they are going through difficult situations and that's probably the reason why they are showing you know, these hard times they are going through. Uh, so, uh, they suggest that we should work hard to improve the relationship between uh, those students who do not behave well and ourselves. So we should try to create some bonding between teachers and students, a student-teacher relationship. 
um, they will also have to help our students establish a plan to improve their behavior. And finally, we have to work hard to find positive aspects of our students' behavior and reinforce them. We all, as human beings, we all have positive and negative aspects. And some students, uh, everybody has positive aspects. So we have to try to find in those students who are causing indiscipline in our classroom, who are misbehaving, we should try to find, you know, those positive aspects and try to reinforce them. Uh, because this will be helpful for their um, for their improvement of their behavior in the class. Um, Student-teacher relationship. It is important to create certain bonding between uh, students and teachers. Uh, I know we are the persons who are you know responsible for the class, but we should also try to show that we are no like dictators and we are not rulers but we are persons who are there to help them to teach them and this is actually the student teacher relationship is actually one of the most important factors that contributes to classroom management uh, if there is a good relationship between teachers and students uh, it is that we will have a um, a good uh, classroom environment. Okay, so there are some factors that we have to consider when we're talking about student-teacher relationship. One of them is respect. We have to respect the students. If we want students to respect us, we have to respect them as well. So we have to model this um, value. Uh, also, we have to be assertive with our students. We don't know what they are going on uh, they are going through, uh, we don't know if they are, uh, you know, sometimes we don't know if they are going through difficult times, so they, students don't uh, open to us. So, but we should try to avoid attacking them or making them feel humiliated, but we should rather try to correct them in a clear and respectful and patient way. Also, uh, something else that we have to consider is to a value their personal interests. If they feel that they are valued, I'm sure that it will be more, you know, open to collaborate, they will be more, more willing to collaborate in our classroom. Enthusiasm, enthusiasm is another factor that is very important to motivate students to participate in the class. And finally, we also have to consider balance. Uh, we have to balance our our demands from students. We we can be demanding, but we should we should also have some rules and some goals to be met from students and from ourselves. Okay, so what to do in case we are facing classroom conflict? So some recommendations to manage this kind of situations is try to resolve these conflicts, conflicts through class meetings. So in these class meetings, uh, we are offering a space for the students and for ourselves to examine together, to work, to work together, work together to find a solution for the problems that are going through in the class. So uh, for these classroom meetings to be effective, we really determine what uh, what is the conflict, what what the conflict to solve is. We should allow the students to express themselves and, and you know, we have to listen to them for, uh, for them to tell us what is the problem and why they are behaving in this or that way and we should uh, listen to the different persons involved in the conflict. And also we should ask them to uh, offer solutions to solve the, the conflict. This is very important for, uh, for uh, these classroom class meetings to uh, be effective. Um, students will work together to decide what the best, solution, best solutions are and also offer strategies and also offer uh, some ideas of what um, 
uh, consequences uh, they will face in case they don't meet, you know, the strategies they are proposing. They, if they don't comply with the strategies they are proposing. Well, another um, another recommendation is to promote the use of self-analysis journals. Students will have the opportunity to reflect about uh, the, the, the conflict they are facing or the problem, they are, the, their behavior. Um, we should also promote the use of cell regular um, in order for the students to think about, to learn to think about how they could react to situations that are difficult or frustrating for them and maybe analyze how they can behave in a proper way or how they can solve the problems, the conflicts by themselves. Um, class preparation is another point that is very, very important to consider also. We should try to manage our class time effectively for this, we have to prepare the class in advance in order for the class not to become uh, chaotic. Uh, we should also have routines pre previously established with the students, with our students, um, establish a schedule for attention to parents so that they don't interrupt our classes. We should also take a student's attendance. This is a good recommendation to take a student's attendance while they are working on a practical activity in class. In that case, we don't lose, we, we, we could make better use of our time and we are not going to lose the, the first minutes of class, for example. Um, and then we have to consider uh, also that our classes should be very motivating for the students. So for them, in order to focus in the class, and to pay attention to us, actually. Uh, for this reason, we should consider to plan more interesting classes uh, to develop a good relationship with our students. We already talked about that and what factors we have to consider for that. We should try to increase our students' confidence to uh, participate in class. And, you know, we, we already mentioned some of the strategies we could use in order to make them feel more valued so that they are able to participate. They are more open or more willing to participate in the class. Um, try to allow students to have a positive ima image of themselves. Uh, teaching a way that students see uh, that what they are learning is relevant and valuable and useful for their daily life, you know. Uh, try to transmit your own motivation to the students. Be enthusiastic by showing them how important and interesting the content of the subject is. And finally, create a safe and pleasant class environment. Try to be uh, demanding and strict, but not rude and, you know, to the students. And as a conclusion um, of this work, of this presentation, we can say that the proper, proper management of the class is fundamental if the teaching process, in the teaching process, because it allows the continuance of op optimal learning conditions that will facilitate effective and efficient instruction. In classroom management, we have to consider different factors. It is not only necessary to change the discipline, but we should also consider factors such as classroom environment, the materials we are using, uh, classroom preparation, even the location of the seats, you know, how we arrange our classroom is also important for, you know, to create a good, uh, uh, to have a better um, classroom management. Because that really, and also the, don't forget about the relationship between the students and the teacher, among other factors. When we as teachers master all these aspects of classroom man class management, the classroom environment and the performance of the students will definitely improve. Well, I hope you liked this presentation and I hope the information that we have provided here is useful for your class 
and for creating a positive environment and motivate your students. Thank you so much for your attention.